This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is used to determine the relative atomic mass of an element. So here we have a mass spectrum, and using a mass spectrum, we can calculate the relative atomic mass of an element. Each peak on the spectrum shows the mass to charge ratio on the x-axis and the relative abundance on the y-axis. So to calculate the relative atomic mass, we multiply the mass to charge ratio by the relative abundance for each peak, and we add them together and divide by 100. So this mass spectrum is for lead, which has the symbol Pb, and when we calculate the relative atomic mass, we get 207.2, which is the same as the value on the periodic table. Mass spectrometry can also be used to determine the structure of a compound. So here we have a diagram of a mass spectrometer. The stages in a mass spectrometer are vaporization, ionization, acceleration, deflection, and detection. When the vaporized organic sample passes into the ionization chamber of a mass spectrometer, it is bombarded by a stream of electrons. So here we have our gaseous organic compound, which is then bombarded by electrons, producing the molecular ion. The molecular ion is then accelerated in an electric field. Inside the mass spectrometer, some of the molecular ions break down to produce fragments. A fragmentation pattern is produced, which gives useful information about the structure of the compound. So here we have a mass spectrum that shows the fragmentation pattern for ethanoic acid. Each line in the spectrum represents a fragment produced when the molecular ion breaks up inside the mass spectrometer. So next we look at how to interpret the mass spectrum. To solve problems for mass spectrometry, you'll have to use table 28 of the data booklet. In this table, we have the mass lost and the fragment lost. For example, if the mass lost is 15, the fragment lost is CH3. And if the mass lost is 45, the fragment lost is COOH. So next we look at the fragmentation pattern for ethanoic acid. So we'll start with this peak on the right, which has a mass to charge ratio of 60. The peak at the mass to charge ratio of 60 is produced by the molecular ion. So moving from right to left, the next peak occurs at a mass to charge ratio of 45. This peak is for the fragment COOH+. The peak at the mass to charge ratio of 45 represents the loss of a CH3 group. If we subtract 45 from the mass to charge ratio for the molecular ion, we get 15. And by using table 28 in the data booklet, we can see this corresponds to the loss of a CH3 group. The next peak occurs at a mass to charge ratio of 43. This peak is for the fragment C2H3O+. The peak at mass to charge ratio of 43 represents the loss of an OH group. Once again, if we subtract 43 from the mass to charge ratio for the molecular ion, we get 17. And using table 28 of the data booklet, we can see this corresponds to the loss of an OH group. And the final peak on the left occurs at a mass to charge ratio of 15. This peak is for the fragment CH3+. So the peak at mass to charge ratio of 15 represents the loss of a COOH group. By subtracting 15 from the mass to charge ratio for the molecular ion, we get 45. By looking at table 28, this corresponds to the loss of a COOH group. In the previous slide, we identified three peaks, not including the peak for the molecular ion, and those peaks were at a mass to charge ratio of 45, 43, and 15. By subtracting the mass to charge ratio of each peak, from the mass to charge ratio of the molecular ion, we can determine the mass of the fragment lost. So for example, the mass lost is 15, so we use table 28 of the data booklet to determine the fragment that was lost, which in this case was a CH3 group. Next, we subtracted 43 from 60 to give us 17, which corresponds to the loss of an OH group. And finally, we subtracted 15 from 60 to give us 45. This corresponds to the loss of a COOH group. So here we have the structure of ethanoic acid. As you can see, it contains a CH3 group, 
an OH group and a COOH group. This structure is consistent with a fragmentation pattern that we observed in the mass spectrum. Therefore, we can see that mass spectrometry gives us information about the structure of a compound.